So I know Halloween is over and we are already getting to the holiday season, so holiday movies are upon us, but I was able to sneakily see a copy of Freaky since my local theaters did not show Freaky in theaters, but we got Toy Story 4. I mean, who wants to see Toy Story 4 right now during a pandemic that you can just, at least in theaters, I mean, you can watch it on Disney Plus for $7, which is almost the same price as a ticket, but I digress. But I was able to get a, a viewing of Freaky, and so let's dive in. In this horror movie take of Freaky Friday, after swapping bodies with a deranged serial killer, a young girl in high school discovers she has less than 24 hours before the change becomes permanent. So as I said in the synopsis, I don't know if you're very familiar with Freaky Friday, but it basically it's two people that swap bodies and basically you get to watch the funniness ensue of how these two people adapt to themselves being in different bodies. Pretty simple concept. I think it was a pretty smart move on Blumhouse to actually and Universal to actually adapt this kind of story for a horror movie. And I think it's great that they chose Vince Vaughn, obviously this tall guy who basically swaps with a, not a cheerleader, but she's a mascot cheerleader. You know, you can say that. And so it's just very different. And I think it's a cool dynamic that we get to see play out on screen. I do want to touch briefly on the actual concept of the Freaky Friday as far as how this movie approaches it with using a dagger called the Ladola. They do kind of briefly talk about how it's an ancient dagger that allows you to swap bodies and you have so much time. Uh, they go to a Spanish teacher that basically reads an inscription off of a picture of the knife. And what I find interesting is that it seems so simple, yet it would have been nice to maybe have just a little bit more backstory or maybe more of an incantation or something versus just, you know, being stabbed and the other person feels a stab and they swap bodies the next day. I mean, maybe that's enough for everybody. Maybe I'm just kind of missing the point of why we need to have that at all. I mean, compared to like the Freaky Friday movie that I, I like the most with, you know, Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis, I think this one obviously gives you an object that you have to pursue to be able to swap bodies back and forth. So it does make that easier and it kind of gives you purpose throughout the whole movie. But it would kind of be nice to have like flashbacks of other cases or other people who have pursued it. You know, we, we start the movie out with these group of kids who obviously are at a house of a parent who has it. So how they get it? Why do they have it? You know, that kind of thing. It kind of is the little details that it kind of would have been nice. I like this movie pays homage to the classic horror movies that we've known. Obviously, from the very beginning, we were talking about the legend of the slasher. We get to see him being introduced, and it's basically tropes for Michael Myers and Jason. And it's just kind of cool to see them play out. There's other scenes where we see the killer pick up a chainsaw. Obviously, for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then we also see her have, you know, like the hook from Candyman. And I know what you did last summer. So there's obviously some good, you know, throwbacks to horror movies of old. And what I find interesting is that this movie has teenagers in it so uh, I'm not sure that all of them are really familiar with those concepts but this movie tries to give them to you anyway. I will say personally that I am not really a big fan of comedic horror movies. I just don't like satirical horror movies whatever you want to call them. Sorry not a fan of Cabin in the Woods. I just don't like that kind of silliness that they have in the movies. Now what I find interesting is that lately we have like the babysitter on Netflix. I do enjoy that so this is kind of reminds me of that just a little bit where it's Funny, but not like so over the top that it's just kind of like not believable per se. So even like from the first moments of where he's killing these teens that are talking about the legend of the slasher, you have him basically killing them in pretty aggressive ways, I feel like. Like he, he wastes no time just going after them and taking care of them. Now there are some things that, you know, you do find funny right off the bat as far as how they're being killed. So like one of the guys gets killed just like straight like this, but it's not like you would think in a, in a it reminded me of like 90s, 80s and 90s movies of old, but it, it wasn't so much super, super serious, but it's not super, super funny. It's kind of an in-between, which I think is a, what this movie does really good about being on the fence and grasping both, you know, both genres as far as straight horror and satirical horror. I think Vince Vaughn does a really good performance as far as being the killer. You know, what I find interesting about his character is he doesn't use a mask all the time, and then sometimes he does use a mask. I'm not really sure that he really would benefit from either, you know, either way. I think no matter what, he's very aggressive. I mean, he's a very aggressive killer. You know, Michael Myers, you know, is the kind of guy that's like scares you, lets you run, and then he just kind of takes his time because you know he's going to get you. Jason, I would say, is probably the closest match to what Vince Vaughn kind of acts like in this movie. I mean, he emulates obviously both of them, but, you know, he... He scares you, kind of lets you go, but when he gets you, he is aggressive. And I find that really refreshing, I guess, for a horror movie that he just kind of goes after. And like, if he's going to kill you, he's going to kill you. And then on the flip side, when he actually swaps spies with the actual character Millie, you know, he does a really good job of, you know, trying to let her friends know that, hey, I'm Millie, I'm not the killer, you know, by doing like, you know, cheer moves and like their secret handshake and, you know, talking about the boys she likes and all that kind of good stuff. So I think he does a good job of 
playing both sides of basically two different characters. Also going with that, I also want to talk about Vince Vaughn's backstory as far as, you know, we get to talk about a, like an urban legend, but I kind of feel like it'd be cool to talk as they talk about him, you know, maybe later on in the movie have more of like, not so much why is he a killer? Like, I don't even know that, you know, his parents beat him or molest him or anything like that. I was just, you know, more talking about, they talked about how he's been doing this since the seventies, but it'd been kind of interesting to maybe get scenes of crime scenes or flashbacks of newspaper clip, you know, something like that, just to kind of add to it to show the more intensity that we get from our killer as far as him being a slasher. You know, every time they talk about Jack the Ripper, they always show a clip of Jack the Ripper killing some woman like on a bridge or something in the middle of the night. So I feel like with the same concept with a slasher, we could have seen some scenes of Vince Vaughn murdering his victims from past years. As far as Millie's friends and family, those are basically the supporting characters of this movie. I did like that we got to see, obviously, her two best friends are very funny, and they obviously make the movie more enjoyable. <laughs> I like the, there's a couple scenes where we get to see one of her friends actually team up with the mom, and then we also have her sister and her mother, who are also the characters that we get to see throughout the movie, and what I find interesting is that the sister is a cop, and the mom is basically a retail worker, and there's a funny scene that you're going to watch where... The mom has an interaction with Vince Vaughn after they've already swapped bodies. So it's basically Vince Vaughn as Millie. And the mom basically kind of hits on Millie, which I thought was very hilarious. And it was a very cool scene to see. And like I was saying, even though that mo that scene is very, you know, it's supposed to be very funny and kind of take you out of the horror movie. It's not done in a way that's just like straight like slapstick or just kind of like, you know, dirty comedy or anything like that. It's just kind of, it still kind of goes with the movie and still helps progress it along. It doesn't take away from the horror elements. But overall, I like the supporting cast. I think they actually add more to the movie versus taking it away. One of the things I did like, of course, this is going to be more of the high school element of it, is when Vince Vaughn and Millie swap bodies and Vince Vaughn is in Millie's body, she does get to seek her revenge on the people that have been giving her a hard time during her high school year. And I find that, you know, I kind of feel sorry for them. I'm sorry, I don't. You know, I'm sure everybody can relate to the people that she deals with. And so it's kind of cool to see her get her revenge. I know that sounds bad. You don't want anybody to die. All life is precious. But it's kind of cool to see how she does it, who she does it to. And in, honestly, I don't feel for them. Let me in the comments below if you feel for them. You're like, oh, Millie, why'd you do that? I was more like, yeah, that's a good job, Millie. Good job. I mean, no, no, don't, you know, don't do that. I will say there's some obvious things as far as if I'm going to give this like bad marks. I guess this is not... We're getting into the bad stuff. There's not really a whole lot of bad. I really like the movie a whole lot, but if I had to give it some marks, I would say that there are some kind of elements of the story that kind of don't make sense and kind of things that you probably would not do just from common sense. So for instance, the sister is a cop, right? So if I am on the run as a slasher, but I'm Millie and I'm with my friends and I've explained to other people who I am. So they can understand, you know, hey, don't be afraid of me. I'm Millie. I'm not really Vince Vaughn, a.k.a. the slasher. So if I am on the run from the cops, but I need help, why can't I just go to my sister, who's a cop? But instead, they don't go that route. Uh, and I'm talking in reference of them actually trying to go after the dagger to reverse what has happened to Millie. Um, I think it's an obvious choice, but they could have just gone to her sister and explained the same way they did with her friends and say, hey, I'm not the slasher, I'm Millie, I'm your sister, giving her clues to say, hey, believe me because of this, this, and this, or they could have gone to the mom and did the same thing, who could have helped them go to the sister and explain, and they could have done that. But in all reality, that probably wouldn't have been the best way to go, because if you do that, you take some of the funny elements out of the movie, and so I can see why they did it that way. But there's going to be some times where you watch this movie and you're like, hmm, are we going to go the Hollywood route and go this way, or we, could you just do the common sense thing and do it this way? I know, like I said, if you do the common sense thing, you take away some of the runtime and the kind of the fun and scenes that you get from the movie. But, you know, in some scenes, in some sense, I would say common sense would be OK. And one of the things I want to talk about was the ending. So overall, I was happy with the ending. I think that it obviously we know what happens as far as it being Freaky Friday. So obviously it's, everything's going to be reversed. But as far as what the movie does afterwards, that's the part that I kind of am split on good and bad. I think that they had an opportunity to leave it open for a sequel. Maybe there's still opportunity for a sequel. This is done by the director of Happy Death Day and then Happy Death Day 2. So I think that they can get creative if they really wanted to as far as how the movie can be done if they want to do a sequel for Freaky. Because I think, and honestly, they could do a sequel. But 
As far as what they did for the ending, I do ultimately like the ending. I think it's a good way to bring Millie and her family together. I won't give too much away about why they, why she has a struggle throughout the movie and how it brings them together as a family, but you'll see in the movie and you'll understand. But I think it's just interesting that they had an opportunity to do a sequel and kind of leave it at a cliffhanger, but instead chose to basically show you those scenes, not do the cliffhanger, and then just basically end it. So... And I don't think there was a an end credit scene, so nothing like that. But I do think that the movie would have been just fine with it being a cliffhanger ready for a sequel. Maybe Vince Vaughn doesn't want to do another freaky movie. I think he'd be great. I think the movie, I mean, I guess the concept, I mean, you have Child's Play, which is the same thing over and over and over. So if that can work, I think Freaky could work. At least Freaky too. I think if they were to do something different, they're going to do some happy death day two stuff and basically it's kind of like oh this really didn't happen so now we're able to do the sequel you know that kind of thing which is kind of sloppy that's why i kind of give it a bad mark but they could prove me wrong and make something creative but that's probably what they're gonna do so overall i enjoyed freaky i know this movie is getting about 85 percent on rotten tomatoes and i think it got like a b minus cinema score i know that there's some reviewers that are like more critics they're like eh, i didn't really enjoy it but then like most fans did enjoy it i myself i enjoyed it i Throughout the whole movie, I wasn't like, God, I wish this movie was over. I was like, God, this is actually kind of fun. This is good. I'm enjoying this. And compared to other horror movies that I've reviewed, like Come Play, The Empty Man, I'm going to do a review about The Dark and Wicked. This was kind of a different and refreshing horror movie, even from a comedic aspect. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So in that aspect, I'm going to be giving it four out of five Vince Vaughn's. Let me in the comments below what you think about Freaky if you've seen it. What are your thoughts? Do you think there should be a sequel? And what do you think overall? And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed hit that like button. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Justin underscore McGill. Make sure you follow the channel on Instagram at The Mishup. And I'll see you guys next time on The Mashup.